Hi, Computer Science 2 class. I hope you are all doing well and are working on your code programs when you can. Um, I decided to go back to some of the lessons that I assigned out earlier because um, I know it's really hard to do these on your own. Um, sometimes when you're not sure what the instructions mean exactly and we're not in class where you can ask a quick question very easily um, and it's not always feasible or possible to get on Zoom or even emailing back and forth is sometimes hard too. So what I thought I would do is create some videos on each of the lessons that goes through each of the screens and kind of just shows you and I can explain what you're supposed to be doing. So if you need to go back to a lesson and correct some things, um, you can do that and maybe have a better idea of what needs to happen on that screen. Um, so I have graded in PowerSchool up to I think lesson 16 now and I noticed the last few lessons um, not as many of you are getting into the lessons and getting them done so I just I thought maybe if I give you a little bit of a, a um, some hints and some help on that that maybe that will help you get in there and get the motivation to get finished so this will be for lesson 15 on velocity so I'm going to share my screen I'm going to pull up each screen just like you would in lesson 15 on your own. If you've already done them, great. Um, check PowerSchool though. I will be grading over the next week and updating all of those lessons. So go back and check. And if I've marked down on anything, I'll show you where the feedback tab is. Um, but go through and just see if I've left you feedback and correct it. And then email me and let me know that you have corrected it and I will update your grade in PowerSchool. Okay, so let's start with lesson 15. And I'm gonna put a little dot around my mouse so that you can actually kind of see what I'm doing. So lesson 15, overview, velocity and rotation speed. So previously, when we have wanted something to move, we tell it um, sprite.x equals sprite.x plus one or minus one to go the different, a different direction um, or y if we want it to go up or down. Um, instead of doing that, we're gonna use a new block called velocity. And it looks just like these right here. So sprite dot rotation speed dot velocity x which will make your sprite move to the right or left, and velocity y, that will make your sprite move up or down. Okay, so that is just that overview on screen one. And then the video that you can watch. So it's just an explanation. This, this block just replaces that counter pattern. Okay, so lesson three, uh, sorry, 15.3. This one says one way to move is with the counter pattern. Okay, so we're familiar with that. We've used that before. So instead of, we're going to drag a sprite dot velocity x block below where the sprite is created. Okay, and what's our sprite's name? Um, fish, right? So these links that say show me where, if you click on it, it will just give you a little box down here to show you where to add the code. So that's helpful. And so we're, I'll just drag a sprite.velocityx in underneath. And we're gonna call it fish. Next one, assign the velocity x property a value of one. Okay, and run the code. That fish is moving really slow, right? So if I increase the number that's in this velocity, what do you think happens? Let's try it. If I increase it to say seven, not 71, let's try it. Okay, moves much faster. What if I give it a let's see it's going to start over on the on the left i don't want to give it a negative value negative will move it in the opposite direction 
Okay, so if it was starting in the middle of the screen, um, for example, if I change this to 200, because that's my X, right? Starts in the middle and goes that way. If I change this velocity to negative seven, it's gonna move in the opposite direction, okay? So with velocity X, negatives move to the left, positives move to the right, okay? That's gonna stay the same on velocity Y, only up or down. So positives are gonna move one direction and negative numbers will move the other direction, okay? So let's look at three, I'm sorry, number four now. So a floating down feather, it's not moving, so we need that block. Again, we're gonna find the block that makes this feather go down, use it outside of the draw loop. Okay, that's important right here. Show me where, right there, this is gonna be the exact same as what we just did. However, we need velocity Y on this one instead of velocity X. Okay, and then you can experiment, is it a negative or a positive number that makes it come down? Okay, so rotation, we know how to use rotation. Um, instead of doing the counter pattern like this, sprite.rotation equals sprite.rotation plus two, we're going to use rotation speed. Okay, so in this, make the sun rotate by three degrees each time using the rotation speed block. So if I hit show me where, okay, are you sensing the pattern? <laughs> Let's drag in the rotation speed block and our sprite is sun and we want it to go by three degrees. So if I put three degrees right here, my sun is moving, okay? If I pull that out, pull the whole block out, the sun doesn't move, okay? So that's how rotation speed works. And, and the higher the number, the faster it's going to go. And that's all you'll do on this one. Okay, now this one is going to move under conditions. So we're not going to put it up here outside of the draw loop. We want inside the draw loop in an if statement to check whether the space bar has been pressed. So again, I'm gonna hit this show me where. And look right here, here's an if statement. If key went down space. So if the space bar gets pressed, not only while it's down, but just if it went down once. Then we're going to drag a rotation speed block in inside here, okay? And our color wheel is not doing anything. We want it to move. So you will drag in a rotation speed block and our sprite is named a wheel. And let's see, let's give it four. Does it tell us? It doesn't tell us which one. Okay, so reset, run, and remember I have to hit the space bar, and now it moves. Okay, and it will just keep moving. I can change that to be a negative number and it would go in the opposite direction. I can make it higher or lower to increase or decrease the speed. Okay, lessons uh, 15, seven. This is a, a sprite that looks like, a, this is called a flybot. Okay, so a little robot that flies. Okay, use an if statement inside the draw loop to check when the space bar is pressed. Now, if you don't remember how to do that, we just did it on the previous lesson. Okay, so I'm not gonna do this one for you but go back to it and see what code you need to have to check if 
the space bar has been pressed. Then we're going to use velocity y, not rotation speed like the last one, but um, velocity y to make the sprite go up. And again, up and down, you have to see which one you're going to use, negative or positive numbers. Okay, let's look at number eight. Okay, so this one, it would like you to look at the code and determine what it's actually going to do and then write your answer and then run it. Okay, so you're not changing the code on this one. Okay, we have if statements, three if statements inside of this draw loop. Okay, use a sprite dot velocity x inside each one to make the three following movements. Okay, so inside of each of these if statements, here's um, one, two, and three. So they're setting animations on each one of them. So now you're going to need a sprite.velocityx block also inside of each one of those if statements. So I would put it underneath the set animation in each one of those if statements and then determine what that condition is. So move the fish to the right. So that's going to have a number in it. Move the fish to the left. That will have a number in it. Stop the fish. Think about that for just a second. What are you going to put in there to make the velocity nothing? Okay, so you'll have three statements in there. Okay, screen 10 just shows you some different movements with velocity, okay? Now we talked about this when we first went over counter patterns, how you need to have um, this one's going to move across the x-axis, the rabbit is moving on the y, and then the hippo is moving both. So the hippo is going to have both x and y. So we replace that with velocity. All right, so you can see that over, over here, the hippo, velocity x and y, and they're equal so that it moves smoothly. Rabbit velocity y, pig velocity x. Okay, so we're just replacing those. Okay, side scroller 11, 12, and 13 are all part of the same project. So you'll start something in 11, and then you'll add to it in 12, and then add to it again in 13. Okay, so let's look at this. We have a frog and a mushroom. We want to check to see if when, um, when the frog is sitting there, if the up arrow has been pressed. It would make sense to hit the up arrow and the frog would move up. Yes. Okay, so let's look at this. Again, show me where. We'll jump down and highlight which code blocks you need to be working with. Okay, and there are these comments too in gray. The comments will kind of guide you to where you need to be putting those blocks. Okay, so if frog.y is greater than 324, so let's think this through on the grid. 324 on the y axis is right about here, 324. Okay. Um, right where the frog is on the bottom. So that it looks like he's sitting on the, the ground, that brown um, spot at the bottom. Okay, so if it's greater than that, so like below, um, we want him to just end up on the, on the ground. Okay, and if the user presses the up arrow, okay, so we need another if statement inside of it. We, make, we want it to stop moving, if the up arrow, or I'm sorry, not if the up arrow, but if the frog gets back down to this spot, okay? So you're gonna add an if statement and make the frog jump up, otherwise stop moving. Okay, that sounds familiar. Add code that also 
checks if the frog has reached its highest point and then make it go back down. Okay, so over here, the frog's highest point is gonna be the top of the screen. So figure out what coordinate dy needs to be and you will check that just like you've checked here on this one right here. Okay, so we're checking a condition of the frog's y position. Okay, so that's 411. Now on 12, there is a mushroom. It needs to move toward the frog, okay? Use the velocity x block to make the mushroom move left across the screen, okay? Um, so this is a little hint right here. The mushroom should start moving at the very beginning and never change. So it just needs to keep going and going and going and going. Should it be inside or outside of the draw loop? You decide. Test it. Put it inside, put it outside, see what it does. Okay, so on this one, all you need to do is get the mushroom to loop to get back to here and then come back to the right side and continue going and keep going and keep going. Okay, that's 12. On 13, we want to check. Sorry, let's see. So we wanna set the mushroom's position. Okay, maybe I told you wrong. Hang on just a second. Let me go back to 12. Oh, I jumped ahead, sorry. <laughs> you do wanna make the mushroom move left and then 13 is making it loop. Okay, so I gave you a little bit of an extra hint. So you just want to reset and make it keep looping on the 13. So the object of this one is just to get it so that when you hit the up arrow, the frog will jump up. When it gets to the top of the screen, it'll come down and the mushroom will just move continually from left to right. Okay, that is lesson 15. I will be making other videos for the other lessons. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit and you can get finished. Again, if I've marked down on anything for 15, Please go through, redo them. Oh, I was gonna show you the feedback. Um, I don't have it on this screen here, but you have instructions and then you have help and tips. And if I have left feedback for you, there will be a tab here that says feedback. And I will explain maybe what you did wrong on that particular lesson, why I marked down on it. And you'll see those in PowerSchool if I have marked down on anything. So just go check through each of your lessons, see if there's feedback, and that will tell you which one you got wrong. You can redo it, email me, I will check and run it, make sure that it's running correctly, and I will update your grade. Hey, thank you. And I will put together more videos so that you can get some help on these lessons. Thanks.